Ariel Halwani in Albuquerque, New Mexico, alongside John, the magician Dotson, the newest member of the UFC's bantamweight division, right? You have officially moved up? Of course, I'm moving up. Uh, I had a problem making 25s, and everyone's telling me to go up to 35s, and it might be a new, fresh new start. After that DJ fight, did you know in the back of your mind you were done with flyweight? Uh, no, I wanted to keep on going to fight at 125, but someone told me that I need to move up, so I agreed with those, uh, with that, uh, well, well, what they had to say. Yeah. What do you walk around at? Right now I'm 157. Okay. I'm a little thick. I'm fat. I kind of look fat. You look I, great. You no, know, I have to wear a sweater and hide it all. Right. <laughs> I know the feeling. I know. It's like, everyone talks about their winter coat, but it's just that winter flub. Right. Um, so last time, of course, we spoke to you and saw you was in September for that fight. How long did it take for you to get over the fight, or are you not even over it? I'm not over that fight. I want to. I still have unfinished business. I feel like. I want to go out there, be, still fight Demetrius Johnson, fight him at 125 and do something that no one else has done. And I'm still frustrated that I didn't do it. I got two chances and I'm very upset at myself for not going out there and accomplishing it. Did you feel like moving it up to 135 gives you this, okay, because you know when you lose to the champion twice, it's hard to get that third crack. But you've beaten the champion at 135. So now you have a really clear path to the title. I do have a clear path to the title, but at the same time, we have to look at what he's done since me and him have fought last. Like when I fought him, I knocked him out, and then he went on this tear and uh, 135 and became a champion. And I went on a tear and lost to a different champion. So I want to see what I can do at this new weight class. Are you shocked that TJ became such a great fighter? No, I'm not shocked. He was he was one of the phenomenal fighters in the house, and I told him in, like on the show when we were on the Ultimate Fighter, I was I told him I wanted to fight him because he was going to be the best fighter in the house and best competition that I'll uh, face in the whole time. And I had to fight him in the finale, and he proved out proved to me what I thought in my own head that he was a champion. So your manager Ricky told me recently that you guys want to fight Thomas Almeida. Do you agree with him, A, and B, has the UFC granted this wish? Uh, no, the UFC hasn't granted that wish, but. Brian Stan sat there and said, no, there will be no banner weight be calling Sean Shelby. And I was like, snap my fingers. So I was at Ricky's house watching the fight. I was like, yo, Ricky, yeah. make this happen. He goes, what? I was like, dude, they're saying that nobody to call him out. I'll call him out. I ain't afraid of nobody. And they're like, really? I was like, hey, if I can't get a fight right now, this would be the best, uh, best way to go about it. Sure. Like, everybody's looking for an opponent, and I'm the only opponent that doesn't have anybody signed uh, signed a fight to. Just, so did they say they're not interested, or they just haven't gone back to you? Uh, they haven't got back to me. Okay. So I just sat there and told everybody I want willing to fight. I don't care who I have to fight. They want me to fight Thomas Almeida, Uriah Favor, if someone else pulls out on them, Brian Carraway. I want to fight somebody that's going to make me worthwhile right now. How many fights away do you think you are from that title fight? Uh, I don't know. I just got to I got to figure out who they're going to give me first. So if they give me Uriah Faber or Dominic Cruz. I know Dominic's fighting yeah. TJ, but if something happens and they were willing to say, hey, John, you want to step up to a plate? I'll be like, yes. It doesn't even matter if it be on a day's notice. I'll go out there and go fly and go fight somebody. All right. Let's talk about what happened this weekend. Holly Holm won. I don't know if you heard about this, but it was pretty big news. Who? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Where did you watch the fight, and what was your reaction when you saw her pull off the impossible? Man, I was at the Downs here in Albuquerque, and we all were just excited, excited for something that happened that we already saw happening. Like, everyone kept on saying it's a little impossible thing, but it wasn't impossible. We knew Holly Holmes was going to go out there and beat Haranda. We just didn't know when it was. And when she did it, ended up knocking her out. It was the most phenomenal thing. We all jumped for joy. It was like all of us celebrating our, like, our friends having babies just popping out. Like it was just, yeah, what? We're winning, we're winning. It wasn't just she won, it was we won. And we are like, took it all, all the hard work that she has put in and we've helped her get ready for and us getting punched in the face, especially me getting hit a lot by her. You spar with her a lot? Well, I'm two feet tall and then everyone was like, John, you can move forward. And I was like, okay. I'm happy you said that it wasn't just that she won, Everyone won. We won. And I'm, I'm getting the sense that she has this amazing connection with everyone. Everyone has a great Holly Holm story. Everyone loves her. No one says a bad thing about her. Why do you think that is? Because she's, like, the nicest person in the world. Like, my friend Nick Ursel sat there and said, if we needed a representative to go out into space and show a different planet what the human, what Earth is all about, we'd have sent Holly. Because, one, she's a, f a physical specimen. And then, two, she's the most nice and humble person on the planet. She shows everybody what human beings are really supposed to be like. And we're like, oh. That's a good point. She really does. She's that nice and kind. So, Have you talked to her since? Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. I haven't texted her. I feel like everybody's been barding her, so I didn't want to bug her by sending her a text that she probably got 50 million times. I just can't wait to see her so I can give her a big old hug. What do you think you'll say to her? <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs>
and then uh, give her a big old hug, and then she'd be like, thank you for all the help. And I was like, no, you did it. You, you did it. And did I, you cry when she won? I was about to. I was all ecstatic. I was just more happy for her because she did, she did what she wanted to do. She went out there and tried to go. She toppled one mountain with boxing, and she came over here. She's at the top of the peak of this one. So with mixed martial arts, she's just doing something that no one else has done by being the best fighter and not just in mixed martial arts but in all combat sports. Did you bet on her? I wanted to, but I don't. Like, I don't bet on my friends. Okay. Last time I bet, I lost uh, a couple grand. So, wow. I've, and that was like mm, four or five years ago. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that ever again. When you got back to the gym, did you feel a little extra motivation? I, I, I know you don't need more energy, but because you know she did that and everyone was so excited, did you feel a difference in the gym the next day? Well, of course, everybody was already trying to step up on their S game, and it's like you got A game, and then you got the S game, you know, that superior game, and everybody was trying to step it up, and I was like, okay. That's how it's going to be today. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. And we've just been running through it. And so everybody wants to be the next champion. So we have Cowboy that's all up on deck, and then we have Carlos that's right afterwards. So it's going to be awesome. And then hopefully Johnny Bones. Oh, I know he's already going to be a champion. <laughs> In my eyes, he's still never, right. he has never lost the title just yet. Right. So he might have been stripped of it, but he's still the champion. Uh, finally, you know, you, you, you've been there before. What kind of advice would you give Ronda? Would, would you, if you're her, would you want to fight Holly again, or would you want to build back up? If I was Ronda, I would want to go ahead and fight Holly again because okay. uh, I just lost my title, and I would want to make sure I can go to try to settle an old, an old score. I, it sucks to lose, and everybody was sitting there trying to tell you how bad of a person that you are for when you lost. Well, they're always on your side when you win, but when you lose, they're just going to kick you, they're going to kick you, and they're going to keep you down there. So you want to step up and try to do something uh, phenomenal again. So, yes, if I was Ronda, I'd be trying to willing to go at it, but just take everything step by step, day by day. It's, it's tough being a fighter. How about all this hatred that she's received? What do you make of that? Do you find it to be rather disgusting? It is because everyone wants to – it's just like how when Anderson lost. Mm. Everybody was all on his side anytime he did a little shake and bake moves and made him look so much of the guilt that he was. Mm. And then now, now, nowadays he sat there and did that, got knocked out by Chris Weidman. They're like, well, now you suck. Mm. You shouldn't have been doing that. No, no, no. So, yeah, like it sucks to hear all that, ne that negativity coming around his way just because she did something good and then she got knocked out and now everyone's telling her that she is the worst human being on the planet. Like, it's horrible for people to do that. Right. Fans can be fickle sometimes, right? Of course. They're either on your side one minute and, and then another time they're going to hate you. But I can guarantee you all those people that talk crap about her behind her back, as soon as they see her, they'll will so run it up so quickly to take a picture with her. Right. <laughs> Well, it is good to see you again. Good luck getting that fight at 135, and uh, good luck in your return to bantamweight. This is exciting news. Bantamweight, in my opinion, one of the most exciting divisions right now in the UFC. Oh, I know. I can't wait to go back, back into it and have some fun. Like, maybe I can get another bonus. <laughs> Thank you, John. Oh, no problem. Thank you.